Everything around us has changed from what it was a decade or a couple of decades ago. This is a requirement to aspire and create one global platform. This was possible only because of the evolution in education. The education system is an ever evolving concept that will foresee new changes generation by generation. At the same time, there were many new theories, concepts and tools that have been added to improve the infrastructure of education system and improve the quality of education to a great extent. Laurel High Global School with a commitment to create global citizens and future leaders with 21st century competencies has created a learner friendly and inspiring environment to foster the innate potentials of each student. The school has taken steps to change the education system, creating one global platform with high educational standards and providing opportunities to its learners to meet global requirements to become a global citizen. Students who gain their education from this school are equipped to face the challenges and convert them into opportunities wherever they travel across the world. Laurel High Global School is the first international school in the premises of Rajamandri which took steps towards innovative, dynamic and inquiry-based learning to its students. With three decades of experience in the field of education, the school authorities believe in empowering parents along with students to understand changing education system globally and their child's potentials to be one of those global citizens hand on hand. As a part of its mission, Laurel High Global School invited many international experts from different fields of art and education. Dr. Donna Star Quigley, principal, has worked in the Ministry of Education, Ontario, Canada. With four and a half decades of experience in education, she has also taken care of 51 schools in Canada. She is the author of many social studies textbooks from grade 1 to 12. Though Dr. Donna belongs to Canada, she has taken classes and teacher training programs in China, Singapore, Australia and many places in the world. We just are unhappy, but the children don't have the ability to, to deal with their negative feelings appropriately. So they holler, they hit. It is a very long time before Dr. Donna, in the workshop with parents on formative years of a child, explained to parents how important the 5 to 12 years in child development were and how to deal with them in making them responsible future citizens. Parents also interacted with Dr. Donna and learned a lot about how to understand their child. She also emphasized on facts to teach children good discipline, good eating habits and hygiene. She explained to them about their roles in physical, emotional, well-being and also overall development of a child. Dr. Donna also reflected on the acts of kindness and said that parents have to take the initiative to inculcate kindness, love and helping hands to their children. Director Sunkara Ravi Kumar, Dean Ms. Aruna and Principal Ms. Sham Sundari also took part in the workshops. International experts and education system are quite different and Dr. Donna was part of classrooms for a month. Students were listening to her with lots of involvement and excitement. She has shared her experience in the school with East News TV. So Can you snore? 
Let's hear you snore a little bit. Let's have a little snore. Oh, we all sleep in this story. Okay, oh, good, good story. And then, because the dragon didn't do anything, she picked up his ear again and she said, Hey, dragon. But the dragon was so sleep. He just snored and snored. How about if you snore a little bit? Don't you know what snoring is? Like, oh, good, like grandpas do. Okay. And the third time, the dragon seemed to be very much asleep. So the third time, Elizabeth snuck up to the dragon and she picked up his great big ear and she put her head right up to his ear and she said, Hey, dragon! But the dragon kept snoring. He was sound asleep. So Elizabeth climbed over the dragon. Piggy bay. Yeah. Wow, excellent learning. Who else wants to call some? I was listening. Could you call a few? No? All right, it's a little hard. All right, then. Um, where is the person? Now, I forgot. Where is the person who's going to find candy? Bye-bye. Well, first I'll say that education for children in the future needs to change everywhere, not just in the West or in, in the East. The educated learner of the future is going to be a very different person than the schools are producing in this day and time. The future demands that children be more ready to think creatively, to think divergently, to manage time, to work independently and cooperatively with others, and to work in the global context. Uh, what I'd like to say about uh, primary education, I believe that children should play. Children, children need big muscle activity, lots of exercise, and lots of uh, opportunities to explore their world in concrete ways. I think that if children have a balanced life of imaginary and creative play as well as physical play, and of course all the rudiments of learning, mathematics and language, and a balanced way, then I think that that is the best for children. In Canada, our program is more child-centered, and though I'll say the program in, that I've observed at this school is certainly excellent, in Canada you would see a learner that has a more balanced day. So we would have time for uh, listening, speaking, reading, writing, experimenting with materials, games, quiet time. So our emphasis is on having the children talking and being creative, whereas what I see here is children who are less free to, uh, to have a more broad program. Well, first let me say that I have to commend the administration of the staff here. Principal Arun is a very clever woman and knows that if you want to change your staff and move the school forward, that it is critical that you include parents, not just as information receivers, but as partners in the process. The truth is children are growing people and parents want to know what's happening at school so that they can support the school, so that they can watch their child and share in this important time in their lives. The roles of parents and teachers are to provide an environment for children where they can feel that they are able to grow, have a sense of belonging, feel that they are important, and discover their own strengths and weaknesses. It is critical, according to the literature of the formative years, that children have positive images, positive opportunities, so that they can see themselves as learners, as friends, as playmates, 
as responsible children at home with chores and duties so that they feel good and open about addressing their adult, their adult life and, the, and, and going through all the stages of their development. And what you asked me was what do I think of, of what, did I, what do I think a child needs from their caregiver? Well, the obvious answer is they need love and nurturing and kindness beyond those things that are so important, food, shelter. Uh, children need to be valued. And if I could suggest one thing that parents might do for their children that would make a big difference is to invest in them their time. Play with your child, talk to your child, understand them, share their world, because it's a very short time that you have those little children when they're little. Well, I'd like to point out that um, my interest in education and uh, children at their early stages of learning is quite a long career. And I am constantly, as children should be, lifelong learning. And I am interested in learning more myself about how children are schooled in various parts of the world. I'm very fortunate to be, have been welcomed here to allow myself to experience how children learn, the kind of resources that are available in a typical school in India, to talk to teachers, to speak with administrators, to find out what is the same and what is the difference from other places that I've been. So my main purpose here is to grow, and my second main purpose is to share what I know. There's a lovely community in this school of sharing. So many teachers have invited me to point out tips for them. I have to tell you I'm delighted to share the strategies that have worked for me, and of course I'm learning from teachers. I think this is important, it is important to be a role model. As you might see, I'm an older person, but once we're committed to our love of children and education, the learning never stops. So I see my purpose here is to be a partnership, to explore what I might have to contribute and to see in what ways I might understand learners from another perspective. Now this is a very large question. And I will point out to you that that question is full of political minefields. One must be very careful not to criticize another system. I'm not here to say where I come from is the best. I'm not here to say you should look at the model in Australia. That is not the purpose. How do we get to excellence? And that's what we all want for our children and for our education system. It's a long road, one day at a time, with an open mind, finding opportunities to read, to think, to see what fits for us, what can we benefit from. And so the answer is to, first of all, understand your learner. Get a good picture of what your future needs in society are, and try and prepare children for that journey in the best way that you can. One comment that I said to teach, to the parents rather, is that this, there is no handbook for being a parent. And I think people who are managers of educational change, though they may have lots of insights and they have a lot of learning and background, it's still pretty much the same. Find your best way forward with the resources that you have and the problems that you have to resolve.